with you. Presented by Snowcroft. Kellogg. And Pep Milk. Starring Jack Carson, Jimmy Durante, Olsen and Johnson, Danny Thomas, Ed Wynn. And in just a minute, the Olsen and Johnson Show. She reads the rhyme of Little Bo Peep, but let her dreams go on the loose. She'll ride with Pet Milk's mother goose. Here's the Queen of Hearts with Pet Milk Tarts. My tarts are good as anything. Pet makes them fit for any king. Now little Jack Horner speaks in his corner. I thumb my way through lots of pies, and those with Pet Milk take the prize. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake it as fast as ever you can. Whatever I bake, it's as fine as silk, because I always use that good pet milk. Well, Mother Goose, the dreams are done. This pet milk trip with you was fun. And now to dream while we're awake, we'll eat the dreams pet milk can make. Remember, pet milk. We've got to work past this, Jones. Only a miracle can save him. Respiration 40. Pulse weak. Sponge. Scalpel. Scalpel. Dr. Cooper. Dr. Cooper. Respiration 20. Pulse very weak. Clamp. Clamp. Suture. He should, be in, he should be in coma about an hour. What time is it now? 7.59. What? Let me out of here! Take it easy, you've had a very bad accident. Only an operation can save you. I don't care, you can operate later, but I gotta get out of here. But I'm in the middle of the operation. I don't care, I gotta get out of here now. But why? Because it's time for the old Sid Johnson show! <laughs> $10,000 reward, they'd all be out of looking for him instead of sleeping all day. <laughs> Sheriff, there's only one thing that'll wake those varmints out there. Watch me. Boys, the drink's on the house. Hey, didn't I tell you? <coughs> Sheriff, have you heard the news? What news? Black Pete is back in town. He is? What? The well, boys, in honor of Hell's a Poppin' Week, I'm buying. What do you have? Bourbon. Bourbon, you. Right. Right, you. Red Eye. And you. What do you have? Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll have the cash. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's how. Black Pete just killed the sheriff, and he's headed this way. Guys, left. The first man that laps around here gets this, brother. Looks like you.
you miss? <laughs> How come that just broke? Slow bullets, brother, slow bullets. <laughs> what are you laughing about? What's the matter? Why don't you put some wood on the fire? I'm freezing. Hey, we're running out of wood. Yeah? Well, I'll get some wood for you. Put some wood on this fire. Keep them warm, huh, kid? Yeah, get it. How long has that guy been standing by the fireplace? Oh, two or three hours. Yeah? Hey, Scotty, how come you never pay for a drink? How do you Scotsmen get drunk? Do you want to know how we get drunk? Yes. Well, I'll show you. You will? <laughs> it's a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Let's have another drink, huh? But this time, this one is on me. Come on. Uh, thanks very much. Mine's a scotch. And yours is nothing. Get over there. <laughs>
to have a whole lot of cow hams for dinner. Frankly, I've never tasted cow hams, but I guess there's something like pig steam. Oh, I just love it out here in the West. The mountains and the cactus and all you cowboys. Oh, it's all so Western. You know, we don't have a thing like this back east. No, three. The mayor wouldn't allow it. But you know, yesterday we had a nice time. We took a drift to Boulder, if you'll excuse the expression, damn. Oh, but it rained all the way, and by the time we got there, the whole thing was filled with water. Oh. I felt so sorry for those people. Why, they'll be months trying to bail out all that water. I know, because once we had a flood in our cellar, oh, it was terrible. Just, oh, my goodness, there's my bus calling me, and I had so much I wanted to tell you. Anyway, when you come to Carmel, New York, if you ever get there, be sure and look us up. Oh, George and I would just love that. Now, here's our card, and don't forget the name. It's Mrs. Gabler. Goodbye. Mrs. Gabler, Carmel, New York. Take a little walk, will you? Let me get warm, will you? I'm cold. That's the boy. Take it. <laughs> he really got warm, then, didn't he? I'll have a little drink. Yeah, but you... <laughs> Hold it, partner. Don't ever do that. I'm the new sheriff around here. There ain't going to be no fireworks. No? You're the new sheriff, huh? Yep. The name's to clean up this here town, I reckon. Stop yeah. first with the cattle thieves. You got any cattle? Certainly I've got cattle. How many head? I don't know. They're always facing the other way. <laughs> Wise guy, huh? Trying to be, huh, kid? <laughs> uh, what's the matter, baby? What's the matter? I just got off the stagecoach. There's a man trying to oh, kill me. Oh, I'll get him and murder him. You do it, I'll kill you. <laughs> what's the matter? <laughs> what's the matter now? <laughs> That's the first ten-gallon hat I've ever seen with legs. <laughs> you know who you're talking to? You're talking to Black-Eyed Pete, baby. How about a little kid? Oh, you haven't got enough money to kiss me. No? Just hang around, baby. I'll be right back. Hey, Sheriff. Yep? Does that reward go for Black-Eyed Pete? Why, sure. Sure. Got the $10,000 right here in my pocket. Thanks. I'm going to get myself up. Here, baby, right in my back pocket. Put your hands on my ears and give me a kiss. Ready? <laughs> How'd you like it? Wonderful, but why'd you want me to hold your ears? With ten thousand dollars in my pocket, I want to know where your hands are. <laughs> give me a drink. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Wait a minute. What's the matter? That dame stole my money. Stole. All the 
King Henry the Eighth. Good morning, sire. I trust you slept well. No, Iago. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. What would you like for breakfast, sire? Orange juice. Orange juice. My kingdom for some orange juice. There's the bonus. We think you stop. <laughs> this orange juice is vile. But, sire, I have just squeezed these oranges. Testimony, you make much ado about nothing. Oh, they look so good when I bought them. Remember, Ophelia, tis not all gold that glitters. This juice is not sweet, and ne'er the twain shall meet. <laughs> As good luck would have it, snow crops the thing, wherein <laughs> I'll catch the conscience of the king. <laughs> Not just to praise it. Here, sire, drink this delectable snow crop frozen orange juice. Frozen orange juice? Yes, sire, fit even for the palate of a king. Julius Caesar, what an orange juice! <laughs> Tis like a midsummer night's dream. Ophelia! Yes, sire? Ophelia, glass with snow crop and taste the difference. Tis like nectar from the heavens. Mm. Hark to me, ye merry wives of Windsor. Spend not a lot of unnecessary time squeezing thine own oranges, for that is love's labor lost. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. Go to thy merchant of Venice and say, Avant, Avant, Avant some snow crop orange juice. <laughs> and he will give you snow crop as you like it. Spend, and for less than half the money you spend on oranges, you will receive measure for measure. Yes, indeed, measure for measure. Accept no substitutes, lest this become love's labor lost in a comedy of errors. <laughs> but my lord, why only snow crop 
corn stew. It is the greatest name in frozen orange juices. And you can make four full glasses of delicious orange juice from one can of snow crop just by adding water. Three parts water, in fact. By just adding water? Ha! That's absurd. Forgive her, my lord, for she knows not whereof she speaks. I forgive her, sire, for the quality of mercy is not strained, though snow crop strained of all pits. It blesses him that gives and him that receives snow crop orange juice. Very well said, Herman. Forsooth, go now and find it. Go north, east, west, and as far south as you can go. But find it. And bring me back a can of snow crop. No, bring me back a case of snow crop. For the world, from now on, the world is my oyster. Let us drink. <laughs> Toast. <clears throat> All is not well, sire. I doubt some foul play. Remember, Yago, the evil that men do lives after them. Mark me and mark me well. He who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. But he who filches from me, me snow crop orange juice, robs me of that which enriches him and leaves me poor indeed. Good day, sire. There goes the noblest Roman of them all. Had he not brought me orange juice, I might have killed my Ophelia. However, all is well that ends well forever and forever snow crop. Well done. Well done, thou noble students. Class dismissed. I'll see you Tuesday. Wonderful, Professor. Gee, that was wonderful. Well, you mean to tell me, young man, that uh, you enjoy Shakespeare? Yes, sir, I did. Well, fine. And uh, do you belong to this academy? No, sir. I attend the Columbus Boy Choir School at Princeton, New Jersey. Yes. And I study Princeton, New Jersey. And, huh? and, I, and I study voice and dramatics there. Well, fine. Professor, may I please have your autograph? You mean you wish my autograph? Well, that's indeed a pleasure. We've got a lot of fine autographs here. Your name is... Uh, Make it out to Chet Allen. To uh, Chet... Allen. Chet Allen. Wait a minute. Aren't you the young man that sang the leading role in Maladi's Christmas Opera? Yes, a mall and the night visitor. Well, that's fine. Well, congratulations. I presume after such a splendid performance that you received a lot of offers for television and for pictures? Well, I just a, a few weeks ago, I finished a screen test for Universal International. Oh, well, that's fine. What, uh, what sketch did they use for your screen test? Well, in the story, I'm a poor kid and I live with my father. My mother died when I was born. It's my 12th birthday and my father's bringing me a doll. There's gonna be no dog. But, Pop, you said this morning that you were gonna get me one Never and everything. Never mind what I said. Stop that sniveling. I don't want no dogs coyoteling and barking around here. Uh, I guess you're right, Pop. A dog around here would be an awful lot of trouble. Taking him out and feeding him. Besides, he'd only be in our way, huh, Pop? Stop looking at me like that. Like what, Pop? Go on, say it. Say what everybody's saying. I'm, I'm just no good. No, you're not, Pop. You're wonderful. You're the best pal a fella ever had. How about some soup, Pop? Real hot. Joey, from tomorrow on, you're gonna live with your Aunt Susan. Aunt Susan? Gosh, Pop, I don't want to live with her. This is where I belong, here with you. 
Uh, it's no good. Me working in the factory all day and hanging around the bars the rest of the time. I'm a bad influence. Listen, Pop, I'm proud of you. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. Please don't listen to what the other people say, because they don't know you like I do. I know you drink only because you're lonesome, Pop, and they don't. But what you're going through, Pop, is only a storm. And storms will last forever. Chet Allen, huh? That was a fine job, Chet, and I'm very, very proud of you. And I think everybody's proud of you. See those two little red lights out there? Millions of people saw your splendid little performance there tonight. A fine performance, and wherever you go, wherever you are, you have the best wishes for continued good luck and good health from Osman Johnson. Thank you. Oh, just a moment. Before you go, would you mind doing me a favor? Certainly. Uh, would... Uh, would you mind giving me your autograph?
husband. Hide. What did you expect, Churchill? <laughs> About face! That's what the public wants, new faces. Have you got a nickel? 
The little queen shall have a coat. Anything your little heart desires will come. A coat for the queen. you have a pick of the three loveliest of lovelies, huh? Well, that's not a bad deal. Thank you very much. I think so.
you drank it so fast. <laughs> I can't say that I blame her, though, Mother. Orange juice is so good and so good for her. Yes, but it's so expensive. Not when you use Snow Crop frozen fresh orange juice. Why, thank you, Teddy Snow Crop. A day-by-day -day study for one solid year proved Snow crop cost you only half as much. Yes, only half as much as the same amount of juice from oranges you have to carry home and squeeze. Is that so? It certainly is. But what's more, snow crop gives you all the fresh flavor, vitamin C, and health-giving minerals of home squeeze juice. And it's so easy to prepare. Just take a look at this. To one can of snow crop orange juice concentrate, add three parts water, Mix and serve. And in a recent nationwide blind taste test, people voted by over two to one. Snow crop tastes better than home squeeze. There, children, try some. Now, what do you say? Oh, boy. Mmm, that's good. It's always good. So get snow crop frozen orange juice at your favorite food store. The finest foods are chosen. Yeah, all well, the freshest foods are frozen by Snow Crop Frozen Foods. Get Snow Crop. Snow Crop. Well, here we are. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, once again at Olson and Johnson's Snow Crop party in the round to which you all are cordially invited to participate and it's all for fun and fun for all we've invited a lot of our grand guests up here tonight to sit in our little party here and we want to assure everybody that nobody either here in the audience or at home has to be a wallflower so everybody dance everybody dance <laughs> What do you mean, the matter? You're starting a party out here. Yes. You haven't got a hostess yet. Oh, I forgot that we didn't have a hostess. Come Ladies on. and gentlemen, we always have a hostess at our little party here, and this is the way we are going to select her. At the count of three, I want everybody in the audience to stand up. Everybody in the studio audience. Now, here we go. It's Before one. Count three. Wait now, a wait, not, not, wait. It's two. Not yet, not yet. You're not getting nervous down there in the sixth row. <laughs> <laughs> wait, now wait, don't interrupt. Here we go. It's one. I'll shoot you, so help me. It's two. <laughs> now sit down. <laughs> now wait. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, at the count of three, everybody stand up, look under your seat, and whoever finds a can of snow crop orange juice becomes the hostess of the evening. Here it is. It's one. It's two. It's three. Get up. Yeah. Olson's my name, sir. John Barnard, my name. John Barnard. Yes. Well, Mr. Barnard, that's a little bit embarrassing for me because we asked for a hostess, and we've always had a hostess. Would you mind bringing your wife up oh, here? Oh, no, no, you what? can't do that. What do you mean? He won it, didn't he? Was he underneath the seat? Yes. Stick to it, brother. We've got to do something. But what? Let me figure it out. Have you got a coat here? I can look at it. No. Put this on first. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, he wanted. He's got to put it on. Well, where it fit, you know, that's a lot of man there. That's why. Well, I'm going to have to Huh? Right. Oh, there. All right, buddy. Now, there. Well, you, you, look, you look very fine there, Mr. Barnard. Well, you look fine. <laughs> you certainly look fine. If I wasn't well, worried about a black guy, I'd ask you for a date, you know that. <laughs> I don't know how I look, but, boy, I sure don't feel good. If my <laughs> boss is here, I don't know what he'd say. Who? My boss. Well, what's your business, Mr. Barnard? I'm a police sergeant. A pl <laughs> oh, you're a police sergeant. Well, I'm sure that your fellow officers wouldn't recognize you, Mr. Barnard. No, I don't think the FBI would, is it? <laughs> well, are we ready to go? Let's go. No, he's a little pale. Somebody get some lip rouge on him here. Lip rouge? 
I gotta fix him up. He's gotta look like a. Wait a minute. What is it? You broke that. All right. Now do this. Dad, come on. That's right. Well, John, come right up here. John, come and sit right down here. And if you say the magic word, Olson and Johnson are going to give you something. We're going to give you something. And we're delighted to have you here as our guest. Uh, uh, where do you live, Mr. Barnard? Uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Bloomington, Indiana. I, uh, what do you call your wife? Ducky. Uh, Ducky? <laughs> well, listen, when you and Ducky, when you were married, when you were married, where did you go, you know, where do 60% of the people go on their honeymoon? The famous place. Where do they go on their honeymoon? Hotel? <laughs> no, not a hotel. It begins with an N. Begins with an N. New York. No, not New York. It's a... Nina Barella, she was very, very good, you know? And, uh, uh, Sergeant, don't let that disturb you. Now, we want to give you something, but you've got to remember something. Where did you go on your honeymoon? Nyack. Nyack. Nyack, New York? Well, Nyack, that's not the word. It, it's near a falls. Is Nyack near, near what? Little Falls. No, not no, that. No, give him a bit. Tell him it's in Canada. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's, it's between Canada and between America. American United Canada. States. Well, I'm sorry, you didn't get the answer, Mr. Barnard, but I want to thank you for coming up here, and I have a little gift here that I'd like to have you take back to uh, you and your wife with the compliments of Olson and Johnson, and when you get to Bloomington, say hello to Indiana University. Thank you. Really? Come on, thanks. Oh. Nice hand for Mr. Barnard coming up here. <laughs> Can you imagine if we had 30 seconds to go, he'd have said Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. <laughs> Get on the Kellogg's old brand wagon With the best brand in the land The cereal that tastes brand The cereal that's all brand Here is how a couple of folks Started out with old brand 
Their household was modern, planned to a T, but modern food lacking bulk caused them to suffer irregularity. Till once on TV said an announcer man, get on Kellogg's All Bran Wagon, eat Kellogg's All Bran. You'll like its rich bran flavor toasted Kellogg's way, and with All Bran, you're sure of this each day. Supplies all the bulk in your diet, said he, that you may need for youthful regularity. Being wise, she thought, that makes sense to me. So next day she bought All Bran and decided to see. Sure enough, Kellogg's All Bran set them feeling brand new. So if you're like this couple, see how All Bran might help you. Get on the Kellogg's All Bran wagon. Eat Kellogg's All Bran. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Olson and Johnson once again thanking you for the opportunity of coming into your homes, coming into your clubs, and bringing you just a little fun. We're very, very, very proud of our heritage. And at the end of each day that we can look in the mirror and I can say, well, kid, we tried darn hard to make a couple of people laugh today. And we can't end without just a modest little toast. May you live as long as you want to. And may you laugh as long as you live. Milk and Kellogg have brought you Olsen and Johnson on the All Star Review. Remember, it's the brand new All-Star Review. This is Andre Baruch speaking.